How are you football fans? This Sunday, you can stream Fulham v Liverpool and Everton v Chelsea. That's an amazing Paddy's Day lineup for a one-off payment of just €10. Euro. To grab a Now TV Sky Sports Day Pass and only pay for the games that matter to you, search Now TV today. Content streamed via internet, full terms at nowtv.com. Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Archangels, ghosts, and Bigfoot, oh my. It's just another night for Supernatural Girls. Real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now, for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girls. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I am here with my co-host, PK. How are you tonight? You really want that answered. <laughs> I don't think retrograde <laughs> is the honest. <laughs> oh, no. I'm holding on to my backside because I'm about ready to lose it with all the, this oh, stuff going out with the retrograde. Well, you know, we have great guest tonight who is going to teach us all about how to get into a different part of our brain so we're not cannibalized by all these terrible things that go on in our everyday life, including the uh, the power of that lower brain. He has this down to a literal science, and we're going to be talking to him in just a little while. His name is Dr. Michael Cotton. He is the author of a great book, which is called Source Code Meditation, Hacking Evolution Through Higher Brain Activation. We need to know how to be activated. But before we get to Michael, we got to talk to you, PK, about the numbers, because we've had some wild rides just recently, (laughs) and you said, you said, you predicted this. You said things are going to come out that people don't want us to have come out into the open, and look what's happened this past week, this past couple days. Incredible. It's just, you know, one thing after another. You don't know which thing to look at first. Uh, I didn't get all the information on it, but the uh, there was a cardinal that was charged with uh, sexual abuse of youngsters, and oh. he was finally charged against the church. I see where he shot himself today, or someone shot him. I don't know which one. I didn't hear the rest of it. Oh, that's but uh, that's, uh, God does take care of himself in his own way, doesn't he? I That's guess. Oh, my. Just too sure. much, too much of that going on. And there, there's going to have to be, there will be more things coming out through the church about such issues. Now they don't have a choice. They're going to have to try and fix it. They've got to quit sweeping it under the altar and do something positive. About time. Too, too many people have been hurt and have to live with the, the trash. I know a few people that have been, had problems with priests and they've come to be and it's got awful what it's done to their lives. So somebody's got to yes, step up and hope that God, the church does help those that have been put through all this pain. But well, it's switching gears thing. here. Oh, you know, I wanted is, to share disgusting. one thing that, that on, on the subject of the church, because you know there were three mm-hmm. prophecies in, uh, when the children saw the Virgin Mary right. at Fatima. And the last prophecy <laughs> the church has never revealed. But I was good friends with Dr. Andrea Puharic, who was a medical doctor who studied all of these things and also participated Mm -hmm. in many different psychic programs of the government. And he told me, he said, the last prophecy is the end of the Catholic Church. And that's why they didn't want to talk about it, because they were going to come to an end. And maybe because of this, I don't know. But uh, Andrea shared that with me probably 30 years ago, that that Mm -hmm. was the last prophecy. So go ahead. What else is going on? well, there have been things that going along with that, and we're going to do more looking into that as time progresses. But for what's okay. going on today, the hot spot, being in the movies and TV and all that other stuff does not give you the right to buy your kids in and out of schools. Oh, my I think goodness. It's You're been not... disgusting how this has come about. And the pictures on TV, I hate to say it, the one with uh, Lori's girls, the arrogant 
attitude that comes across is, you know what? God does not give just to special people. We are all supposed to have a fair shake at things. But I did a little looking at things here. The word privilege is a 40, which is a four. Four means by the book, by the rules, building a strong foundation. So to be privileged, uh-huh. you need a strong foundation. And today says it's a one, and it's about putting things in order that it doesn't give a privilege. A person must work on their own, and they must earn it. What a new word. Uh-huh. You can't buy it. It's got to be earned. And all this That's comes right. out. It came out. I actually started coming out yesterday. So it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be more things rolling down the hill between between the fake pictures and whatever because we've talked about before, this month is about family, family family-type situations. Well, it certainly is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, get the kid a pony. Don't buy him a college education like this. I know. I mean, you think about, uh, well, I thought about all the the people that I know that have worked so hard and (laughs) to get into college and the college of their choice. And sometimes they're turned down and their parents are not buying their way in. So, yeah, this is absolutely despicable. It's good that the FBI finally did an investigation that was worth something and that these people got found out. So I also think that the kids that were involved, I know some people are saying it shouldn't affect them, but it sounds like they knew. Sure it should. So if they knew that they were bought a ride, I think that they should be out mm-hmm. of that ride. But you know how to decide which one did and which one didn't. But the bottom line is, you know, unfortunately – the end result is it's, shall we say, the things created by ill-gotten gain. It doesn't, why should the parents be given, these children that could do this, even the kids could have done it on their own possibly. Too many of them can't. You know, excuse me, I'm going into rowing. There's no pictures of it. They, they even go so far as the fake pictures. Come on, people. I know. I know it. <clears throat> but again, you predicted this uh the stuff was going to be coming out whether people wanted it to or not. It was coming out and here it is today. So, I can't wait for can't it because it's going to be worse. Oh boy. Because I don't Buckle know up, what it everybody. is, but it's coming. So, hang oh, on my. to the side of the boat. Folks. We're going to be in for a ride. Okay. <laughs> Well, we also had a very interesting group of paranormal stories that you can find on our Facebook page. And mm-hmm. one of them I was particularly intrigued with, which is a guardian angel story where a mysterious stranger just tapped somebody on the shoulder. The man turned around and it saved his life because mm-hmm. there was a truck. This happened in Turkey. Apparently this truck had a tailgate that wasn't secured. And the shopkeeper was stacking goods outside his storefront. And he heard someone call out. He felt a sudden tap on his shoulder. He turned around towards the street. And a moment later, a truck with a loose rear gate came around the corner. The gate swung open right through the space where this man's head had been only seconds before. Interestingly enough, the entire incident was captured on CCTV. You can see it on our Facebook page. So take a look there for that article and for that video. You tell us what you think. So when he turns around, the mysterious stranger is already, he's gone. So this guy really has some kind of a guardian angel. Yeah, I love stories like that. It's so nice. Oh, I do too. People are saying. Was it the one, there there was an automobile accident and they didn't know how the woman got out. And she said, well, I think it was a fireman that helped me out. But there was nobody there. So yeah. God does take care of us if we just take That's care of the right. rest it's of one, us. It's wonderful. So I just wanted to, again, let everybody know, if you would like a numerology reading with Patricia Kirkman, you can find her at patriciakirkman.com. You can also find her on our website, supernaturalgirls, <clears throat> excuse me, with a Z, dot com. If you would like a soul realignment reading, <clears throat> excuse me, with me, you can find me also at Supernatural Girls with a Z dot com. And I have new candles. And they're made by one of our guests, Katrina Raspall. Mm-hmm. She is a 
Lorraine Bruja and Corandisma. She's one powerful lady. I'll tell you, I've been telling all my friends about her candles. And I had her design some and put her mojo in them for me for soul realignment. And now the candles go right along with your reading. We have also an additional one for wealth and one for love. Those will be up on the website and on our Facebook page. So you can buy them at your convenience. And let me tell you, get ready to meet up with real power when it comes to those candles. Katrina does an incredible job making these beautiful candles, and they pack a punch, I will tell you that. So, anyways, if you would like to hook up with Katrina directly, her website is Two Sisters Botanica, and the number two is spelled out, D-W-O, so it's Two Sisters Botanica.com. So tonight, we have a very special guest, and I have been counting the minutes to get Dr. Michael Cotton on the show with us. He is changing the he's – teach, he's going to teach us a little bit tonight, but you're going to have to read his book to get the rest. How to change the brain before meditation, because when you do that, it changes the rules of the game. And it leads to quantum breakthroughs and higher consciousness. So you can get to total transcendence with what he has discovered. He has found a way to share this with all of us. And Dr. Cotton holds a doctorate in chiropractic, and he's also a leading theorist in the evolution of consciousness, culture, and the brain. And he is the founder and director of Source Code Meditation and Higher Brain Living. I mean, he's got it all, and he's here with us tonight. Michael, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Patricia. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Well, this is great. Well, we're because... definitely happy to have you with us tonight, oh, that's for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'm I'm still chuckling from uh, PK's line about buy them a pony. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one, huh? Yes. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Well, you know, in all of your work, and as I shared with you before we went live on the air, I've been following your work for the last few years, and I am in awe of what you've created here and what you found, but you didn't start out knowing about this. Tell us a little bit about your journey. I was really struck with how this all came to be and where you were before you went to chiropractic school and and learned all these amazing things and created all these amazing things. So what happened? Well, uh, where to start? So I went through most of my childhood a very stressed out, anxious, fearful kid. And I'm not exactly sure why. I I mean, I know why now because the lower brain was highly active, but I, I don't know why that started at the time, but I went, I went through life just kind of a, a mess and I fumbled my way through school I went to college because I was told you were supposed to go to college. I got thrown out of college my first year with a 0.57 GPA, which I'm not particularly proud of, but yeah, (laughs) exactly. And I started taking minimum wage jobs and just was going nowhere. I had no purpose, no meaning. I was going through the motions, waiting for the weekend so I could you know, drink beer and hang out with my friends. And I did that through my, a great deal of my 20s. And about the time I was 26 years old, I started feeling something inside of me uh, changing. And it, it had, in fairness, been, I had been feeling it for a little while, like a, just a different energetic feeling in me. And I was feeling uh, like this bubbling of of empowerment that wasn't necessarily related to anything. And I had just this defining moment while I was working in this steel and aluminum shop going nowhere. (laughs) And I had just this overwhelming surge of energy move through me. And this, what I describe as this view from 50,000 feet where I could see, like, I, it just crystallized my ho- the whole path I had been on, my whole life process leading up to that moment. And I could see clearly where I was heading, which was nowhere. And I had this just, just immediate sense of confidence and clarity that my old life was over. 
and I kind of went into what I describe as this, this, this kind of flow state that led me down this path to start trying to understand what was happening with me. Uh, and I started reading everything I could read, doing everything I could do that had anything to do with, you know, human potential, everything from a developmental psychology to, you know, Zen Buddhism to quantum physics to uh, consciousness studies and contemplative studies. And, and I just, I, I started assimilating information really, really rapidly And at some point in this, I had this, uh, I read a book called The Understand Even That I Was Doing It, right? And I I read this book called The Three Pound Universe that was put out by Omni Science Magazines. And I had this crystal, uh, another kind of crystallizing moment that I had this aha that the, the brain, the human brain was the missing link particularly these higher structures in the brain was the missing link to almost all self-development and personal transformation. And that it had been largely overlooked or, or not understood, right? Most of our, you know, from yoga to contemplative methods to meditative traditions, they developed thousands of years ago before we had any real knowledge about the brain. And so what I found is, is that all, all higher states of consciousness have higher corollaries in the physical brain. And there's an untapped part of the brain that I realized was the missing piece in all of this. And that's what actually led me or part of what led me into the chiropractic profession, which I long ago left for that profession, but I went into it to get information about physiology because it was based on the nervous system. And I wanted to start taking Uh, elective courses in brain function and working with different energy work techniques to explore ways to impact that higher brain. I discovered that it was, uh, we had evolutionary potential in that higher part of our brain, but it wasn't fully functional. It wasn't, it wasn't metabolized. It just, it wasn't awake, right? It was kind of dormant. And uh, I'm, I'm, I want to, bring this to the point so I don't stretch this out forever, but I started to work with different systems that I, that could move energy. And I started to explore ways that I could liberate this energy in the body that could awaken the brain. Part of what I had discovered was that every one of the world's wisdom traditions at the highest level, all had a system that, that noted that there was energy in the body that was associated with certain pathways. Like we've heard, you know, like meridians in acupuncture or nardi points in mm-hmm. yoga, or all right. of these traditions, all of them had, had, had systems to move this energy. So I realized that that was part of the process and that I started developing a system that could actually mobilize this energy through gentle touch in the body into these pathways in a very specific protocol that would release that energy to the brain. And we, we now, we actually have an institute in Chicago where we measure this stuff. We have our own director of research and our own EEG system. And, and, and so it, we can, when this energy mobilizes in the body, it starts to wake up higher potential in the brain and something really remarkable then happens and it unlocks what I call a hidden or latent inner organic technology, a capacity within all of us to actually self energize that higher potential within the brain. And so I developed a system. I trained hundreds of people across the world in it. Uh, and we have uh, had research at a, a major academic institution a couple of major studies showing high end quality of life with the technique, but it was a, it was an extensive training program that had to be done by a qualified professional. And we've now had a breakthrough called source code meditation. That is kind of the next iteration of where, uh, where this is all going. 
So I, I feel like I should stop here. <laughs> yeah, I could no, go on forever. This is, well, <laughs> no, this is wonderful so to hear this experience, but I, I'm so intrigued that here you were standing in this aluminum shop. I mean, I'm sure you're doing, what, welding, stuff like that. And all of a sudden, this energy just spontaneously took over. I mean, that's quite a miracle. Right. Yeah, yes. And, and it's a miracle that's in all of us. Well, it's and incredible that, yeah. to me. Because now, are you when you talk about this energy and, and how you have found the pathways to how to basically spark the pathways and connect them, are we talking about Kundalini? No, well, let, let me just let me say a couple of qualifying statements before I answer that is, is that one of the things is, again, is that all of the world's wisdom traditions, all of the ancient healing arts had different names for the energy, and it showed up in different gradations and in different ways. Mm-hmm. And so on one level, there's this universal energy that has the potential to show up in different ways in the human body, whether, we, whether it's kundalini or prana or chi or ki. So the reason, I'm, the reason I don't want to just say, yes, it's kundalini, is because it, it, it actually moves through the body in our system with a lot more grace and ease and consistency and reproducibility than what a kundalini response typically is. And so, uh-huh. you know, you could call it prana, you could call it chi. Uh, none of these systems fit exactly how I see it. So we kind of have created our own uh, way of looking at this and our own way of languaging it and explaining it. Well, that makes sense because we have had people on the mm-hmm. show talk about Kundalini, and a lot of them have had very uh, painful, to say the least, experiences with it, and it is inconsistent. So having something that's consistent, yep. that's so positive and reproducible is a definite plus for anyone who wants to embark upon this path. Now, you talk a lot in the book about the primitive brain and the lower brain and how it mm-hmm. really holds us back. So can you talk mm-hmm. to our audience about that a little bit? It's a really important concept. There it is. is a- it, it, thank you for for recognizing that because it is it is a life changing concept. <laughs> we we humans evolved. Uh, a, there, our brain evolved in layers. A lot of people don't understand that, but the way evolution works is it usually doesn't abandon something that works. It usually just builds a layer over the top of it. And so the human brain evolved in layers. And let me first say that the highest, most evolved part of the brain is largely dormant. It's anatomically there, you know, architecturally there, but it's not functional. It's not getting full full energy to it. And so the issue is, is that the lower part of our brain is the part of the brain that keeps us safe. It's the part of the brain that evolved when the environment was full of predators and it's One and only function is to keep you alive. And one of the ways it does this is through the habituation of sameness, the same behaviors, doing the same things over and over again. Because in the Stone Age, for instance, that led to our survival. So the first thing to note is that Stone Age brain is still in there. It's still in us, right? Even though there's, there's higher layers Right, So there's higher layers that we now have, but that Stone Age brain is still in us. And so, so the, the reason that it tries to create sameness in our life is because to the lower brain, sameness equals safety. And if you think about it, if, 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 if the brain evolved at a time when the environment was full of predators and it was really hard to survive, right, all of one's energy, all of one's attention – just went into how do I get through the day? You know, how do I yeah. wake up, get food, without get getting water, eaten by something? Without getting eaten, without getting eaten, absolutely. And so, if you if you found something that worked, right? If you if you found a cave that you could get in that was mm-hmm. high enough up that the pre, the saber two tigers couldn't get in it, it, even if that cave was a little too small, if it was a little too dark, if it was damp, you didn't really like it. You didn't really like some of the tribe members that were in it. 
you keep going back to it because it's safe. And when right. when you when you mm-hmm. go out the next day to get water, you find a you find a path to the watering hole. And even if that watering hole, even if that path is, you know, full of rocks and stones, if it gets you to the water, you, the next day you go back again. And you, fu- you find a path that gets you to food. And that food, and it may, you know, you may go down that path and you may cuff that path and you may say, I'm going to try a new path. But there's no tigers on the path. And you get to a place that you can get food. And the food may not be the food you want. And you may say, I need to find some better food, but this is half-eaten, you know, half-rotten fruit or whatever. But it sustains you. And the, and the lower brain, each time you do something that creates safety, it, it like it, a process called myelination happens in the brain where it actually wraps white matter around the nerve fibers that make that become your default because the, the, the lower brain doesn't want any risk. It doesn't want to take any chances. It, don't want to, it doesn't want to venture into the unknown because all it knows is the unknown means there's potentially predators. So it just keeps going to the same, doing the same things over and over and over again. And so turn the, turn the page now to the you know, 21st century and understand that even though we have this higher evolved brain, the lower brain is still dominant. And all information in our life, everything that happens, first gets filtered through the lower part of our brain. And it's, again, just trying to create sameness. And so all of this complexity that we've now created in our modern world and our modern lives, it just can't be efficiently processed by the lower brain. And the default is simply, how do I create sameness? How do I do the same thing? And so the significance of this in self-development or personal growth in our modern lives is that even if we have this idea for change or we see this vision for change or, you know, we write down our journal for what we want to change or, you know, we we know where we want to go, there's something in us, a primitive biological part of us that doesn't want any part of that. And so it finds a way below the conscious threshold to cycle us back into our old life. So we say things like, oh, I don't like the relationship I'm in. I need a better relationship, or I don't like my financial situation. I want to change my finances, or I don't like where I live. I want to move, or I, I need a better job. But below the conscious threshold, the lower brain is going, that's not safe. We don't know that territory. We know this territory. Maybe that relationship isn't good. Maybe being broke all the time isn't good. Maybe the job you're in isn't good. But you woke up alive today, which means that we did our job. The lower brain worked. And so understanding that. This this is so amazing because you're explaining a lot of levels of how we also recreate Mm -hmm. the same problem over and over again. I mean, it's like it's often said. You know, that if you don't deal with these inner patterns and you get rid of a bad relationship, it's just going to return in another pair of shoes. And I think yep. that's absolutely true. So you're explaining how this is working and why from a whole different perspective, which is very, very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. So now that we know this the is problem, kind of the... What's the solution? Say that again? <laughs> what's that? Now that we know the problem and we can see that and understand it on so many different levels, this is what's happening to us, and it is cannibalizing our lives, how do you solve it? So you've got the solution. Tell us how this works. How do you, how do you bring this higher brain into play? Yeah, so, so the solution is, it sounds simple, and I've spent my lifetime <laughs> developing the, the, the technologies to do this, but the solution is is getting energy into the higher centers of the brain where we can get enough energy into the higher center of the brain that that starts to become dominant that part of the brain that that nature or god or you know whatever you, your model is that higher part of our anatomy is the part of the brain where we now know we know this from academic research that higher part of the brain is associated with higher states of consciousness, it's associated with the ability to thrive, it's associated with creating purpose and meaning in life, 
all of these high-end kind of quality of life measurements all require that higher brain wake up. We know even, even through research studies that when Tibetan meditators spend 35 years at four hours a day meditation and can enter samadhi states, transcendent states of consciousness, we know that those higher centers of the brain are getting energy. We can measure that, right? And so the, the, the key is, is to start learning to live from that higher brain. But you can't do that. You can't just think your way into that. And so our, our technologies are designed to mobilize that latent energy in the body in a way that it starts to wake up that higher part of the brain. You'll love this one. The, the National Institutes of Mental Health uh, famous um, researcher, Dr. Paul McLean, referred to that, those higher frontal structures of the brain as the angel lobes. And he called it oh, the fourth wow. evolutionary system and, and used the term angel lobes because that's where we have gratitude and purpose and meaning and spiritual awakening. It's all in that part of the brain. And so our, what our system does is it, 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 they provide a way to shift that energy into that higher part of the brain so that it, over time, that new brain starts to become your default, not the, not the old lower brain. And, and as you awaken that higher brain, uh, we have ways to help bring that into your life, to use it for your very specific changes because the, the, the source code meditation technique actually introduces meditation into that awakened higher brain state, which changes everything. Yes, it it really does. <clears throat> but now you, in your book, you also have some diagrams. And, and again, the name of the book, everybody, is Source Code Meditation, Hacking Evolution Through Higher Brain Activation. So you have some diagrams. You have actually some photographs of people uh, activating the root chakra center. I'll just call it that for now. And then sure. a center at the base of the brain. Now, I noticed with your description you talk about kind of almost like, is it like a scooping? That's what it looks like. The, it's, um, it's a scooping of the energy that kind of opens it up. Is that a good way to describe it, or how would you describe it? It, I, it is. I mean, I think that's a good way to describe it. We, we, kind of, we kind of, in the book, we kind of, you know, unpack it in these kind of sequential ways where you learn, you first learn what the feel of it is, and what, what you're calling the root chakra, which, which is fine terminology, but we have a, we have a little different level of specificity in there, which we, we call it the lower subtle energy vortex, and then up at the top, the, the upper subtle energy vortex. But the contact, see, we, we developed the protocol for this for our certified facilitators to do it hands-on. It's been in the marketplace for 12, 13 years. And the breakthrough with source code meditation is I started, I started developing a way for people to do this to themselves. Now, it's not as powerful as a certified facilitator, but it can completely change one's life. And so the, the, the contact kind of goes in in a 45-degree in and a 45-degree out. That's what you're referring to as kind of a scooping contact, which is, which is actually right. pretty, good, mm -hmm. pretty good terminology, right? Yeah, and, and the, the real the magic in it, if you will, is the, is the, the precision into there and getting – getting just that right amount of pressure that creates that release of energy into the brain so that the brain starts to wake up and then it has its own internal latent mechanisms to start creating feedback and self-energizing, which you, you've seen, you can see on our uh, videos and stuff on our websites. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's an amazing, amazing thing to mm -hmm. watch. It's just so involuntary. Mm -hmm. It just takes yep. over, basically. I'm sorry. We have a, a question from a caller, so I'm just going to grab this. And This is sure. area code 307. We're going to bring you live on the air. Hi, what's your name and what's your question for Dr. Cotton? Hi, you're live on the air. What's your name and what's your question for Dr. Cotton? Hello. Oh. No, we can't hear you. 
So we're going to put you back on hold, and maybe you can figure out what's going on at your end. We'd love to hear your questions. Okay. Um, anyways, so you do this at the base of the spine, and then you talk about, what is it called, the yoke of iron up at the bottom of the neck? It's a very interesting term that's used that you said is also found in the Bible. Uh, um, the yoke of iron, no, I, I think I used a couple of terms, the jade pillow, which is which is used in right. uh, Daoist. It, it's, you can find reference to that in 2,000-year-old uh, Daoist text. Uh, the Vedanta referred to it as the mouth of God. Now, there's a pretty evocative uh-huh. term, right, as the, yeah. <laughs> the mouth of God. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's the kind of significance that this, this point has. If you can manage to bring the level of precision into it that's needed to really um, – create the response yes yes now i've done your online course for the uh higher the source code meditation and it's very powerful i highly recommend it to our audience Mm -hmm. members and i i did find that when i started doing the initial contact with the vortex at the root chakra i mean it really produced an immediate response i was shocked yeah because yeah wow was with so many of these things, you know, you're like trying it and trying it. You're like waiting for something to happen. No, this happened right away. There was no question that something was starting to change. It started, and it felt very comfortable. Mm-hmm. Just, just like mm-hmm. you described at the beginning, it was very comfortable. It, it was uh, a wonderful release. And as you mentioned in the book, too, which I think is great, go with it, you say. Don't try to stop happening. And that's so freeing. So tell us more about that. What can people expect? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I want to just add one thing, too, uh, for someone new to this. I was thinking about your listeners. We were talking about this, you know, this kind of surge of energy and all of this stuff. And and it is, and it's quite powerful. But you, and you just, you just mentioned that I say in the book just to go with it. And the reason I say that is because you can make it stop. You can physically stop it, Right. What you, what you feel when yes. that starts to engage is, is initially it usually feels like your breath starts to change, your breathing patterns start to change, and then it will feel like energy is moving in the body. And as that gets cultivated over time, it can feel like this kind of – like your body moves in like this like dolphin, dolphin-like undulation as that energy is coursing through it up to the higher brain. And if you look at it or hear it described, it, you can have this – well, that sounds kind of kind of wild, right? And and it is, but what it feels like, and you you were kind of reinforcing this, Patricia. It feels like it feels like what you've been like, right? There, there's this experience, like where has this been, right? And you can't yeah. physically mm-hmm. stop it. Like you could just set up and make it stop, but the sense is, why would I want to do that? Because it's dumping stress out as the as, as it's engaging the higher brain, the lower brain, stress is being released out of your body, out of your mind. It's building into the part of the brain where you're starting to feel empowerment, confidence, clarity. And it, uh, it, it will take on, there's about three different classic patterns. One of them is this sense of your breathing becoming, uh, I describe it as like a bellows, like, like it's uh, – like it's three dimension, your whole body is like three dimensionally pumping air up to your brain. And the other one is this, this rhythm of breathing that takes on this like wave like rhythm that just cycles. It, it, it's your brain creating its own feedback where it just cycles over and over. And then the other mm-hmm. is that experience that's more, more energy and less breathing. It's where the, the, the like dolphin wave starts to move through as that energy gets into the higher brain. Well, it's it's very very powerful but comfortable <laughs> at the same time. And and as you exactly. said, it's it's totally under your control. If you want to stop it, you can stop it. You know, you sit up, walk around, whatever you need to do. So it's not out of your control. And it right. has this this powerful happiness uh impact I found too. And after I first started using this technique I was, I finished the exercise and I, I was walking around in the house and somebody was aggravating me, but 
<laughs> Won't mention any names. Um, but no. What happened was interesting because it didn't land the same way it would normally land. So yep. what I mean is I didn't have the reaction. I was very, very impressed with that because from that one exercise, that one time that when I first started doing this, I was in a different state. So when this aggravation started happening, it did not have an impact. I was thrilled. I was like, wow, there is something so powerful going on with this. I love it. I just absolutely love it. You yeah. are a genius. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for saying that part of it because that <laughs> that is, uh, it sounds like a little thing, but it is a huge thing and and mm-hmm. I want to just speak to that a moment because it's so it's so exciting to hear you see that say this because it's one of the first things that shows up in this work is that ability to release yourself out of the reactivity of your life and of the environment and it's it, it's it's as if and you said too that that kind of happiness or joy and empowerment comes in and what else happens is it's the beginning of, you remember when I said I had that view from 50,000 feet? It was like I had this transcendent awareness. That's how that yes. begins, right? So, so we're used to going through life, and everything is personalized. Everything is re- reactive, right? We're just, we're, we're like, whatever happens that, that doesn't feel right, there's some type of reaction we do to it. Well, when that stress yes. starts to dissipate out of you, and you start getting in that thrive state of the brain, and you have the ability. In fact, it's just, it's spontaneous. It's not, it's like, it's not even you, like you said, you just noticed it happen, right? It's like all yes. of a sudden you realize, wow, the kid's screaming or that bad news I got or, or, you know, the, the boss doing this or that before I would have, I would have just, it would have set me off in this reactivity, but now it's just, there's a gap between you and all of those events. And you have the ability to just stay in your empowerment and then choose what's the best way to deal with it without reacting. Well, that's exactly right. And that's what I found even just after that first exercise that I did based on the video series that I signed up for with you. And it was very impressive. And, again, what what I love about your work is it's so easy. It's so easy, literally. Anybody can do it. It's accessible right. to anybody. Everybody in our audience, I want you to know, you can have this experience without really much effort at all. But what I want to talk to you about next is something that you brought up in one of the uh, online videos that I saw, and I think it's so important, is there we all have a saboteur that likes to come in and stop us as we get a little further <laughs> along on this path, right? So what we're going to do is take yep. a very quick commercial break. And we're going to come back and continue this great conversation with Dr. Michael Cotton. He is the author of a fabulous book. It is called Source Code Meditation, Hacking Evolution Through Higher Brain Activation. Okay, so we're going to take a short commercial break, everybody, and we will be right back. Pure essential oils, specialized minerals, and a revolutionary anti-aging technology. Astridian combines the best of all scientifically proven ingredients in easy-to-use creams, lotions, and concentrated serums. Astridian's advanced line of products take your skin to a new level of being healthy and beautiful. We offer a variety of collections that address all your skin concerns. The Essential Anti-Aging Series treats and moisturizes your skin for a long-lasting, younger look. The Multivitamin Series promotes healthy skin with high-quality vitamins and minerals. The Sports Series restores skin from cellular damage and stress. Astridian also offers a revitalizing solution for hair and a professional series for doctors and medical spas. Visit astridian.com today and begin your new journey to healthy, beautiful, youthful skin. Astridian, beyond your expectations. Are you ready for a new experience of freedom and powerful connection? Would you like a positive, effortless change in your life? 
Then come to CosmicFusion.com, where we offer the most advanced energy clearing and expansion techniques in the world with a quantum vortex energy to activate your divine blueprint and life's purpose. When your soul leads the way with cosmic fusion and quantum vortex energy, you can break clear of past difficulties and blocks with the power of the source. With cosmic fusion, the source energy does the work for you. It's easy and effortless. Listen to our free meditation right from our Cosmic Fusion website, the Cosmic Code Meditation. Sign up for one of our interactive webinars today. Come to Cosmic Fusion, www.kosmicfusion.com to experience an effortless awakening and transformation. Are you ready for an upgrade? Are you ready for a new experience of living in the fifth dimensional magic and powerful connection? Then visit CosmicFusion.com today. CosmicFusion.com Your property tax bill. Have you seen it lately? It's frightening. Your property taxes are going up while your home value is going down. It's time to fight back and win. For the real truth about the property tax system, get attorney Pat Quintilian's book, Are you getting screwed on your property taxes? How to find out and how to fix it. Attorney Quintilian answers all your questions and gives you the facts you need to fight a property tax bill that is spiraling out of control. You'll also read about what happens to property owners who don't check their property records, only to find out too late they're taxed on square footage, fixtures, and even buildings that they don't own. Is this happening to you? Learn your rights. Buy Attorney Pat Quintilian's book today. Are you getting screwed on your property taxes? How to find out and how to fix it. Available on Amazon.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I am here with my co-host, PK, and our terrific guest tonight, Dr. Michael Cotton. We are hacking the higher brain so, Dr. Cotton, we were talking before the break about the success of this technique, but then I also wanted to revisit something that you shared online about the saboteur that can walk in and kind of take people back mm-hmm. off track from this. How did that happen? Well, that's part of that whole sneaky little lower brain complex. And... The reality of it is, is that, you know, one session or two sessions or a handful of sessions, even if we have a significant breakthrough early on, Mm -hmm. does not eradicate uh, a half million years of lower brain dominance. (laughs) And so (laughs) that (laughs) that lower part, yeah, (laughs) that lower part of the brain wants very much to remain the same. It does not want you living your purpose, creating meaning. That's new territory, right? That's part of a new evolutionary emergent that we have not yet completely developed. And so what, what happens is simply that as you start making progress, that lower part of the brain, that's when it wants to, when, when it, <laughs> okay, so, I'm going to say this without it, – it isn't judgmental about uh, other techniques or anything, but an awful lot of people go through life jumping from one technique to the next, one spiritual approach, mm-hmm. healing approach, new age approach, yeah. and they don't ever really get transformation. In fact, it's so tragic to me – I've studied this deeply – that I believe, by and large, we've really even given up on the idea of transformation. And it's become this kind of this, this word game. Like we say it, we say we want it, but it, it's, it's not really real to us. And so what happens often with, with this, this technique is it starts getting real. And there's a sense in there of, oh, my gosh, my life really is about to be radically different, <laughs> okay? And when that yes, happens, it is. that lower brain, right, it, that lower brain wants to dig its heels in. It's like, oh, 
no, you Boy. don't. Right? And so <laughs> it, it will Boy. then start creating all of these excuses, all of these reasons of why you can't keep going. And uh, it, it's a time where what we, we like to say in our community, just, just do the work. All you have to do is do the process <laughs> and it quickly gets past that, you know, but it, it, it does show up because it's, it's kind of, it, it, that lower brain wants to, it wants to create sameness because sameness equals safety. Oh boy, keeps yes. jumping in there after us, doesn't it? Yep. So it's important not to give that any weight, just to notice it and know it, it can be part of the process of unhooking from the power of that part of our lower brain and just saying, okay, we hear what you just said, that you're uncomfortable with this, you want us to stop, <laughs> you're finding all these distractions, whatever, but you don't have to go along with it. You don't have to buy into it. And I think that's important for everybody to know because this stuff happens quick. I mean, I was really surprised by how immediate this was. This is like right away, bam, you're into a new process. Right. Gosh. Yes. It's great. Yeah, and you got it. And and there will, it is often shortly after the big changes start to, you start to see it. It's like, it's going to happen. And that lower brain says, oh, no, it's not. (laughs) And then it starts to create, it it starts to hijack even our our thinking mind, right? And we start creating all these rationalizations of why, you know, we're too busy to do the work or we can't afford it or we can't get into heat, you know, and it's just, we start creating these, these conditions that allow us to not really have to evolve. And, right. uh, and and you hit, you hit it on the head. With this work, it, it, I merely bring that awareness up. So if, if a person feels that early in the program, they feel themselves start trying to talk themselves out of it, but just acknowledge mm-hmm. that it's the lower brain and then just, just keep going, right? And it'll, it'll take care of itself. Right. You know? It will. Exactly right. Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Now, the, I would imagine in – all of your travels and training all the people that you're training in this and giving them firsthand experience, you've encountered people that have illnesses that are significant. Mm -hmm. And what effect does the higher brain have on that kind of thing? Oh, that is a wonderful question. I was just having a, a conversation yesterday with one of my communities about that that exact thing. And even though none of my work, the, uh, the higher brain living technique or this source code meditation, which was the kind of breakthrough that came out of it, that's, that's new now. Uh, n- none of my work is really designed specifically to be a healing art or a healing system. I, I see a much bigger vision for, for widespread change in the world through you know, helping people unlock their purpose, access these transcendent states of consciousness and start living in a new way and developing into these higher stages of of human consciousness. And so just to frame my, you know, my motivation, but to your question, and it's an important one because it can be a portal of entry for a lot of people, is that miraculous healings happen through going through this process. And one of the one of the key reasons for that is that lower brain physiology, right? I keep coming back to the same thing because it's the missing piece, but lower brain physiology that we all, all of humanity to some degree is still locked in. When the, when it faces complexity is what we're exposed to, right? The, the, those old primitive lower brain mechanisms weren't supposed to deal with a modern world up post-truth era, if you will, that there's so much information and overload in, in our modern lives that it just keeps sending that lower brain further into its protective mode. And so here's the thing. Lower brain physiology equal stress physiology. They're the same thing. So stress no. on the physiological level is produced by an active lower brain. So is anxiety, right? They're two two sides of a coin. And they're the emotional experience of having a lower brain that's hyperactive. Now here's what else we know. And this is this is modern medical research. We know that ninety percent of all medical doctors' office visits 
regardless of presenting complaint, whether a person goes in for cancer, for high blood pressure, for heart disease, for fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, depression, anxiety, whatever the presenting complaint is, we know now, according to modern research, that 90% of the time, stress is the primary positive factor. It's what lies behind whatever Mm -hmm. those symptoms or diseases we're expressing are. We all may have our unique ways. Some of that may even be genetic. We have our unique ways that we manifest stress in our bodies or in our lives, whether it's migraines in you or high blood pressure in me or, you know, depression in someone else. But what the medical research tells us is that it's the stress response that's that's staying active that leads to uh, these problems. And so it's pretty easy to see how when with this technique, one of the first things that happen is it shifts all of that stress energy out of the lower brain and dissipates it out of the body and out of the mind. And when that happens, people start organically healing. But there's even, there's even more to this is that our, our methods are also what we call informed by integral meta theory. So we help people take those awakenings, right? When you wake up your brain and you wake up your mind, we help you map that into your life to be able to use that specifically to make changes in your relationships, changes in your finances, changes in your occupation, changes in your physical body. And all of those things contribute to our wellness, right? And so it has a, it yes. has a very powerful healing impact by, A, getting to that root cause of stress physiology by shifting the brain state. And then it has a very powerful uh, secondary response as a person changes their life through the process, they don't have the things stressing them out, right? Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. So so he, yeah. Yeah. So healing is a real uh, common and often for people who who again we don't you know we're, we're not in the business of you know trying to diagnose people or treat symptoms, but oh, absolutely. but I can't right. uh, you know I can't not be truthful about what happens and what happens is people often go through miraculous healings. Can you give us an example? I, I, of course, you don't need to use names, but some examples of healings that you've seen occur as a result of using this. And we do understand that you're not diagnosing and you're not treating yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that per se, but it just happens along with the process. Oh, I've, I've seen, uh, and I, I will be specific, but I want to start by saying everything under the sun, <laughs> okay? Wow. I have seen okay. people uh, th- through, through the higher brain living technique and the source code meditation technique, I'm going to group those together. You know, it's kind of my work. We've seen, we've seen you know, suicidal depression improved or chronic migraine headaches, fibromyalgia, you name it. Uh, we've we've seen it get better. In fact, uh, the University of Iowa did uh, two studies conduct, uh, that were conducted through the University of Iowa in their social work department, and they measured all of the kind of parameters that peop- that someone goes into a psychotherapist or social worker for everything from fear to depression to anxiety to stress disorders, and we saw all of that improve. Through the, the through uh, in two studies through people going through higher brain living, and not only that, but the, for again for what's even more in line met with what I'm all about is they measured flourishing scales. These are new ways that a- academia measures high end quality of life, and they also saw people improving, uh, creating more meaning in life, having more compassion in life accomplishing goals in life, having more gratitude in life, more spiritual connection in life, more purpose, all of this stuff also dramatically improved in the higher brain living group. That's amazing. And now, you know, there's a lot of talk about opioid addiction. Everybody's screaming about that. Um, but at the same time, there's very little that is traditionally offered as, a, as something, as an alternative. But what about uh, the higher brain system as a way to reduce pain. I would imagine it does that as well. 
I I have uh, a lot of reason to believe. Yeah, absolutely. But bigger than that is that I have also had a lot of experience seeing it reduce uh, addictions in people. And we have, wow. uh, in, in, yeah. In in fact, um, a one one of our facilitators um, was an addiction counselor when he went through my training and certification program, and he was actually able to get it in, to get higher brain living into a large addiction center. And he, uh, he was able to do a research study with 20 addicts going through the program. And this was not done in like a, this wasn't like the university of Iowa studies where, you know, there's a high degree of, of, Mm -hmm. of rigor or standards to the research, but he, he did, you know, standardized questionnaires on them throughout the thing. And, and I have all 20 of those and it's just astonishing to see what they reported and the changes and improvements. And and we see a derivative of this. We're even working on a derivative right now that we call brain first psych. And it is going Mm -hmm. to be a training program for, uh, for mental emotional health care counselors and therapists, psychologists, basically to learn this, to be able to bring it into addiction centers and into their private practices, because it does have such a such an impact. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So needed. It is so needed because you know, it boggles my mind. You know, these medications are obviously they're just handed out like candy, and now we see the mm-hmm. result of that. But at the same time, I've seen other technologies become available that can help people unhook from the pattern, but yet they won't be covered by insurance. So, you know, right. it's a it's terrible, terrible situation. And then, of course, you come across work like yours, which is brilliant and effective, and it's out of pocket mm-hmm. at this point, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. Now, if you would, please tell everybody the different kinds of programs that you offer and where they can go to participate. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So we actually have three different websites, uh, but the, the primary thing I would probably send your listeners to now is the source code meditation.com. That's what the, the book that I just wrote. It's my, it's my first book. Uh, I got picked up by inner traditions, a traditional publisher. It's been selling all over the world now, even though it hasn't, it's only had an English translation. You can find that on Amazon too. Uh, source code meditation, hacking evolution through higher brain living. But our website, sourcecodemeditation.com, uh, you, you can buy the book from there. But it also has, uh, you'll see a drop down that says, or uh, programs and events. And so it, it, will, uh, it will ask you if you're in Chicago or you're somewhere else in the world. And if you're somewhere in this world, there's a place to click and it will it will introduce you to a couple of online programs there's we actually have a special going on right now that if you watch we have a um a 75 minute webinar on the on the page and if you watch that it'll give you a code to discount one of the online programs by 50 percent so that's a good deal online programs yeah yeah that's what patricia was talking about she went through the basic Mm -hmm. program there's there's a even more robust one that we have as well and either of them are great, but we also host retreats across the country, two-day retreats, and all of that is on the sourcecodemeditation.com website. Mm-hmm. We have a uh, retreat. We just finished a retreat in Chicago over this weekend. We have one coming up in May in Los Angeles and September in New York, back in Chicago in November. So we, we do these retreats all over as well, but if they just go to the sourcecodemeditation.com website, they'll find a lot, a lot of uh, what's available there. Okay, that's Sounds great, marvelous. and I do I highly recommend everything you're doing. And people can also have, if there's a practitioner in their area, they can also have the experience of a private session, right? Yes, and that, that is actually linked into the higher brain living model. If they're in Chicago, uh, because, it's, uh, because we're, we're headquartered here, we coordinate the online programs with the hands-on sessions. But if they're not in Chicago, the, the higher brain living and they want a hands-on session, the higherbrainliving.com website is the best place to locate a facilitator. Okay. So people can go there and find somebody. 
to work with. Yeah, and if it's okay with you, I'm going to give you one more. <laughs> We've come this far. Yes, <laughs> sure. You Please. One Definitely. more website because we have just launched what what we call the New Human University, and it's what our training programs are housed in for people who want to learn the technology. Uh, it's not only, I believe, the most potent uh, personal transformation system on the planet for the students going through the New Human University, but it's also where you learn source code meditation and higher brain living to start careers with it, to be practitioners. And so it's, it's thenewhumanuniversity.com. So those are our okay. three websites, thenewhumanuniversity.com, sourcecodemeditation.com, and higherbrainliving.com. That's excellent. Very good. And I, I, thank I you. Saw, thank you, Michael. Um, I also saw uh, that yeah. you really encourage community with the people that come to do your workshops, that when they meet and they work with each other, that you do encourage that. That's another wonderful uh, support system that you offer with your work. Yes. It's, it's, to me, honestly, it's, it's the most amazing part of, of, of all of this. When you, you know, we, the, the, the minimum human unit is two. And so we can't really do anything alone, <laughs> right? They're, we're in yeah. relationship. It, you know, whether we like it or not, we're in relationship. And the dominant culture out there is a giant relationship. We are sharing interior values, consciousness, it's like a group mind, this, this thing called culture. And if you, if you're starting to go beyond that, like if you're starting to elevate yourself or evolve into a next stage of what we call the next stage of the evolution of consciousness, you're going to need relationships that get you, that support you, that are connected, that are resonating on that level. And so it's really important to us that we create these like micro communities where, you know, where we are kind of all in this, this evolutionary thing together. And it's just like, like I'm just coming off of uh, the two day retreat on Saturday, Sunday, followed by two days of my first group in the new human university on Monday and Tuesday. And just oh, the community <laughs> of those four days. Oh, I'm just, it, my heart is so open, <laughs> you know, it's just mm. so amazing being in that field, so to speak, uh, with all of those just beautiful souls that are all share this common vision of waking up and making the world a better place. And so, yes, 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 community is really important, and we do everything we can to create it, not only in the online space through our, you know, Facebook groups and 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 all of that, but also live at two day retreats at events at talks at uh you know we we come together a lot the community that's terrific now i have a question yeah. from uh the text and it says this uh, i have a health issue that does not allow me to lie on my stomach and i see that your system more or less requires that is there another way that i could access the same treatment without having to lie in my stomach. Yeah, there's, there certainly is, and it, it doesn't require that. It's just that that's, that's, the, that's the ideal way to move through the protocol is by starting on the stomach. Uh, you know, ideally you're laying on a massage table, but you can do this laying on your bed or on your floor. Uh, you don't have to have a massage table. But it, it, you can actually uh, learn the technique and do it either – Standing or sitting or lying on your side. In fact, if you're if you can't lay on your stomach, I would encourage you to experiment with all three of those ways and find which way seems to allow you to make the contacts the best and feel the response the best. But I want to also tell this person, and I'm, I'm saying this obviously with zero information about what's going on with right. them. But we, we mm -hmm. also find that once that stress starts to dissipate, once the shift starts to happen in the, the higher brain, once that breath and energy starts to move through you, that a lot of things you couldn't do before, you will be able to do very quickly. And so I've, I've just had, I say this because I've had so many people tell me, for whatever reason, I can't lay face down. And then just a couple of sessions in learning this, they're like, well, I can now. So I'll just say to keep that open, again, that's without knowing 
what's going on with the person for them to also keep the space open, that that might change pretty quick. But if it doesn't, oh, there, there are alternate ways to, to do it. Okay, terrific. Now, our audience is very much involved with the paranormal. When people have these higher brain experiences, have you also heard of reports of any types of psychic experiences? I mean, obviously there's a greater connection with, with the true self. So you think yep. intuition is going to raise exponentially, but anything else, any other uh, increased yeah. dreaming or, you know, things like that? All, all of it. And, and I used to, uh, at, at one point, because I'm, I'm kind of, I, 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 I'm kind of in both sides of a fence, right? I mean, there's a part of me that's a, a mystic and a, you know, an evolution of consciousness, pursuer and promoter and then there's part of me that's the scientist you know we have our own director of research and 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 so i'm i'm very committed to not putting half-baked ideas out there or things that i can't justify and 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 so i used to kind of shy away from talking about (laughs) some of the the psychic or paranormal uh things that emerge in this but but for one I think there's enough science today to say that this stuff is happening. You know, maybe not everything oh, yeah. everyone claims all the time, but there's enough science to say that there's some stuff going on, <laughs> right? And and That's so right. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt about that. And so one of the things that I am really convinced is of is that the higher brain that the, what what I am talking about is a major player in that. Because you're right, it does. We've established it scientifically that insight and intuition uh, are connected to this higher brain physiology, what we call post-rational or trans-rational modes of knowing beyond the rational way of making sense. There's the way to get information through intuition and insight. But what you're asking me and what I'm, I'm confirming within this work is that beyond that, there are absolutely uh, uh, f- for a lot of people, uh, psychic capacities that start to emerge and uh, synchronicity becomes a really uh, big one. When, when you start to kind of wake up into that next world view, there starts to be, it, it's just the, the synchronistic connections where it starts to feel like the, the universe is conspiring for you. Like everything is lined up in this way that seems so inexplicable like like there's no way this could happen by chance right it's like and 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 you start to just expect that that's nice i think everybody in our audience would like to see that happen i mean that's wonderful it goes way beyond finding that parking space so that's terrific (laughs) (laughs) yeah no that's that is really wonderful you've come such a long way since your time in that aluminum shop Dr. Cotton. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm I'm very uh I, I don't take it for granted and I am not uh I learned a long time ago that my ego just has very little to do with anything good that happens and it's it's more I feel uh somehow fortuitously it is uh given to me and revealed to me and then I work really, really hard to put it all together. But it's it's bigger than than me, and I know this. Yeah, it's amazing. Now, I've also noticed from watching the videos that the private sessions, it seems like they are extremely powerful. I mean, it seems like there's a lot yeah. of energy moving. Why yes. is that the case when you have a practitioner working with someone rather than when you're just doing it for yourself? I guess one, uh, the best way I could say that is that what we can teach you in a book or in an online program has the power to change your life, but there, there are, there's another level. And the, the facilitators that I train, this is not a weekend seminar. They are highly trained, certified professionals that most of them have spent years learning to do this. And so the difference in just a millimeter of depth in that contact or vector or positioning or timing of the protocol, all of that 
is, is instrumental into the kind of depth or amplitude of the response. And so it's kind of like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think of a great analogy here. It's kind of like saying that you can, I mean, I guess you could kind of, you know, you can massage yourself, but if you went to a really great massage therapist that, you know, spent 25 grand on their training and two years in school, you're going to get a better experience, right? And so yes. uh, it, it's it's just that they're, uh, they're, they're highly trained professionals. And here's, here's one thing that's really cool about this, though, is, and also, when you, our two-day retreats that we host across the country and our international yes. retreats, we ha- we'll have one next uh, January in Mexico, a seven-day retreat. We provide hands-on sessions at those, and, and they're immersion experiences, and they're incredibly, incredibly powerful. And so whether you're getting a hands-on session with a facilitator or getting them in an immersion experience in one of our retreats, the cool thing is, is that once you get that session and that takes you up to a new level as you continue your mm-hmm. own practice through the book or through the online program it's been elevated because of that hands-on session so you don't lose that you get a new baseline that you get to start working with gosh and well that's can, great yeah, as I, I reproduce as, it as i mentioned before we started the show i've been hoping that somebody will be trained in this area because I would love to have a practitioner to work with. But so far, there is not anyone here in Western Mass, but I'm hoping that will change. You know, PK, I bet there's a practitioner out near you in Tucson. Well, I'm going to have to take a look around because I haven't, uh, I didn't think about it until this evening session talking with uh, Michael. So I'm going to have to do some research. For sure. Yeah, and see if there's somebody near you. I would just love to have that kind of, of a session. And I love the work that I've learned so far. It is, in and of itself, extremely powerful. Mm-hmm. But as yeah. I watched the videos and I saw these people, you know, going through these uh, this energy movement, I, I was very intrigued, and I'd love to have that experience. So it's something I'm going to keep watching for. And, PK, I hope keep you'll find somebody it. in your area. Yeah. Pardon and in me? the meantime, I, I, I said keep watching for it. And in the meantime, I need to get the two of you to one of our two-day retreats because they are, you'll get an immersion of hands-on sessions, and they are powerful beyond belief. Yeah, it sounds it's fabulous. Phenomenal. Yeah, it really That's does. That's a good I mean, way for is, us to do a getaway, Patricia. <laughs> yeah. I know. we got to so. get together and do this. It is groundbreaking work. I mean, you've you've created something that's just amazing, and I'm I still am trying to wrap my mind around how you created it, because it's so <laughs> unique. Yet you're pulling from ancient tradition, but you're bringing it into the modern world in an easy way, to for people to grasp and and use it. I mean, people can just immediately start using this without any concerns at all. There's there's yep, no caveats was- to this. You can just do it. Yeah, that was the really big breakthrough of the of the source code technology that came fairly recently because always before it required uh, for anything to, to ha- you know, there was no teaching of anything. I resisted writing a book for years because there was nothing to offer people to do other than go in and see a facilitator. And then we encounter mm-hmm. people like yourself that say, what well, I'm not, you know, I'm 500 miles from a facilitator or whatever. And so right. the breakthrough of source code meditation was, we, you know, we worked for actually nine years to get the protocol together, to get the ability uh, to teach this in a way that it could be self-administered. Incredible. Well, it works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, PK, yeah. this is something you could just do even if there isn't a practitioner in your area. But it works, and it works fast. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing. It, it really is amazing. Yeah, I mean, you. I've I've been I was a psychotherapist for years, and I've I've learned a lot about different techniques. Tapping is a good one, but this really takes us into a, a whole different place. Now, mm-hmm. have you yes. done measurements? You talk about the research that you have a, a research arm to your to your institute. So when you measure people that are actually accessing the higher brain, what do you see? What are you reading on the oh, EEG? We, 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 see, we, we see the most amazing things. We've actually been producing research for a number of years. But in fact, before we had our own uh, director of research and our own research department, we had different private researchers from coast to coast that were doing 
brain research uh, that, you know, we would do a, a session and then measure the results immediately after we did them where we were doing sessions and measuring the results while the session was going on, you know, and yeah. again, throughout the different phases of, of the process. And we, uh, so we, we've had, we have a long history of, of being able to uh, look at these EEG changes. And now for the last several years, we've had our, let's see, what's it been? Probably four or five years, probably we've had our own, uh, director of research and our own EEG system where we we measure people that go through the programs and the changes are extraordinary. I'll just tell you I'll just tell you one of the things that that ha- that, that first happens pretty consistently yes, please. in the process and that that is that we we see uh, when that when those pathways are cued and that breath and energy starts to move through you and that unlocks that inner organic technology and your body starts to breathe itself is what one way I like to say it. We see then into voltage energy increasing in the prefrontal cortex of the brain in those highest structures of the brain. We also then, and which in and of itself is amazing, right? We also then see it initially yes. start to flood with alpha waves. Alpha waves in the prefrontal cortex are a very unique finding. It's only really shown up in the literature through highly, highly advanced meditators with decades-long practices, when they're entering transcendent states, we see these high-voltage or high-energy alpha waves in the frontal parts of the brain. And ours goes in even another step further, and what happens is, it, it, is that once the energy builds in the higher brain, once the alpha waves come in to the higher brain, then it, a process called coherence, which means it's, it, it, starts to, it starts to cohere which means the brain starts to communicate across the hemispheres where the whole brain starts to work as one unit instead of working against itself. And so we see, we see that happen. And that's actually the brain state that we can then introduce our meditation in the source code meditation model. We introduce it into that brain state and because the brain is now tuned in a way that it can take even just a little bit of meditation and create dramatic change instead of having to use, you know, to, you know, set in a cave for decades looking right. at your mind, right? Because the, the brain yeah. is ready to receive it. Now, you talk in your book about the blender. Can you give our audience yeah. that analogy? I <laughs> love that. Just explain yeah. it because that I mean, makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I love it too. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, it, it, it kind of it ties in perfectly with what what I just said about introducing meditation when the brain is tuned to receive it. So here's here's the the thing. If we understand as we do that the uh, lower part of the brain tries to create sameness, it doesn't want to change because sameness equals safety, and the higher part of the brain wants to thrive, wants to evolve, wants to grow, wants to change. But the problem is, is that we go through life in the lower brain. That's also how we approach all of our healing modalities if we go see a psychotherapist. That psychotherapy is coming in to lower brain physiology that doesn't want to change. If we go see a fitness coach, that fitness routine is going into a lower brain that doesn't want to change. If we go see a life coach, that life coaching is going in. All right, you get the idea. So, Right. If we can shift energy out of the lower brain into the higher brain where it wants to change, then anything that comes next has a quantum effect, has a dramatic uh, outcome. And we use what we call the blender analogy to, to explain this. If you imagine having a blender that's unplugged, uh, but the, the blender itself is full of water, and you – uh, let's just let's say it's plugged in, but it's turned off. Okay, so you you take and you have this. Let's say you have this vial of green liquid. We're gonna we're gonna pretend like it's the most potent thing. Uh, it's a fountain of youth. It's a panacea, right? It's gonna heal everything and and completely rejuvenate our body. And so let's pretend like that water in the blender is our body, and we want to get this green liquid into our body. So we could take that blender that's turned off, and, and let's just in our mind's eye see dropping three drops, one, two, three drops, into that blender full of water. 
Now, we're pretending like the water in the blender is our body and the green liquid is this panacea that we want to get into our body. So we drop three drops. Now, imagine what happened with a turned-off blender. That green just kind of trickles down. You get a little offshoot here, offshoot there. But about 95% of the water, in this case our body, is unaffected, right? It doesn't get right. into those water molecules or as we would say, those cell, the cells of our body. So now let's, right. let's, let's take another blender that's plugged in full of water and let's pretend like the water in that blender is our body. We have the same dropper of green potion that we want to get into our body. And right before we drop this panacea, the, the same three drops, right before we do that, we turn the blender on. And it's such mm. a foo, foo, foo. Now we drop the three drops in. And what happens? Every single molecule of water absorbs is affected by those three drops of that fountain of youth, of that panacea, of that healing substance. Every single water molecule or every single cell in our body is now impacted or affected by that. So here's the, here's the point. The amount of substance that went in in these two scenarios was exactly the same. But the system itself was different. One system was turned off. The blender was turned off. The other blender was turned on. That made all the difference. So it's the same. Incredible. It's, it's, the analogy is if we're in our lower brain, the blender's turned off. It doesn't want to change. So you put your life coaching in. You put your nutrition in. You put your whatever vision boarding you're doing in or, you know, whatever it is, and you're putting it into a blender that's turned off. But if we can bring that energy through your body and that response starts, that feedback, that breath starts to move through it, energy starts to build in the higher brain, the blender's now turned on. So now when we introduce whatever it is, whether it's our yoga practice or our life coaching or whatever, it's, going to be able to be assimilated exponentially beyond what it could be if we were still locked in the lower brain. Just incredible. That That's a great, yeah, yes, yeah. I love it. It's so yeah. perfect. It really yeah. describes exactly what's happening. Oh, my yeah. goodness. This has been great, Michael. We can't thank you enough for coming on the show tonight and sharing all of what you've created uh, to make our lives better. I mean, you've, you've done it. You've done it. Now we just have to participate in the programs that you're offering. And if you could please just, uh, again, list off your website so that people yep. can go so, to them. So there's, there's higherbrainliving.com. There's the newhumanuniversity.com. And there's sourcecodemeditation.com. In fact, I might advise starting with the new human university.com because from there you can get to both of the other websites. Okay. That's so easy. If they just, if they just yeah, if they just start with the new human university. Mm-hmm. Com, uh, then they can access the other sites. That's good. good. And we will post this on our Facebook page tomorrow. Also everybody. So in case you don't have a pen or pencil nearby or something you can log in with, then we will post all of this so that you can look it up. And again, the name of this great book is Source Code Meditation, Hacking Evolution Through Higher Brain Activation. We highly recommend it. This has been a great evening with you, Dr. Cotton. Thank you so much, and we hope to have you back again, and we hope to meet you in person one of these days. Yes, yeah. well, it was sure. my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my passion with your audience well it's just been tremendous yes thank you so much now next week everybody we'll be back again we have an interesting guest who claims to be a hybrid we're going to find out what she has to say and until then we will see you on the blue highway good night everyone mm-hmm. good, good night, night. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another radio adventure with Supernatural.